Welcome back to the Steel City Sports Podcast. This is episode five of the show, and we got a great one today. We're talking the key games of week 15 in the NFL. We're going to talk about Draymond Green's suspension in the NBA, and then we'll finish off with some Bears talk. We're going to talk about what they should do with their current situation. Should they get with a new quarterback? Uh, Should they trade the pick? We're going to talk about all of it. So let's start off with our key games in week 15. Our first key game for me, and this isn't even just because I'm a Steelers fan. This has uh, major wild card implications. It is the Steelers at the Colts. They're both seven and six teams, so obviously they're both holding a wild card spot at the moment. Uh, the Steelers are the sixth seed. The Colts are the seventh seed, and there's currently six teams in the NFL right now that are seven and six. So, you know, some of those teams are going to win on Saturday and Sunday. So that basically guarantees for me, at least right now, that. Whichever team loses in the Steelers Colts game is pretty much guaranteed to not make the wild card spot because you have the Bills in this in this hunt. You have the Broncos who are the hottest team in the NFL right now in this hunt. You have the Houston Texans that have been really good this year in this hunt. So I think whoever loses this game pretty good shot that they actually miss the playoffs because they dropped the 500 and some of those other teams are going to move up. So I think that's a massive game. Uh, the next game on here I have Speaking of another 7-6 and six team, is the Denver Broncos going to Detroit to play the Lions? So kind of what I just touched on for Denver, this has massive wild card implications for them. Um, they won, I think, like six of their last seven games. So like I said, the hottest team in the NFL right now. Um, and they're going to Detroit, who is still in that one seed race. You know, everybody in the NFC likes to talk about the Eagles and the Cowboys and the Niners, but... Uh, the Lions are only a game out of the one seed right now, so they're also um, they have a lot to play for here. Getting that first round by, obviously massive, uh, and the Broncos they're looking to climb up into the wild card spot. Uh, and then the last game I have highlighted here is Dallas going to Buffalo to play the Bills. Um, Dallas currently holds the one seed in the NFC, so they kind of control their destiny here. If they you know win out, um, it, it would cause them obviously to be the one seed and also. I think um, this would do wonders for Dak's MVP case. You know, I've pushed back a lot on Dak's MVP case this year just because I think he's beaten up on a lot of bad teams. But I said if he handles his business through this rough patch of, you know, the the, by far the worst part of their schedule in terms of difficulty, um, then I would definitely, you know, kind of have no real argument left if he beat up on the good teams. And he just beat the Eagles. So now... Here's another good team, the Buffalo Bills, who it looks like they're kind of turning things around a little bit. Um, Josh Allen has been sensational this year, despite the Bills overall kind of being disappointing. Uh, so if Dak wins this, <clears throat> excuse me, if Dak wins this game, it's big for the Cowboys as a team for their one seed, but also it would do wonders for his MVP case. If they lose, though, Josh Allen, I think you have to put Josh Allen in the MVP case because he has the numbers, and if he gets this team into the postseason, I think that's extremely impressive just given how disappointing the team is and I think how flawed their offensive scheme is. You know, They basically just solely rely on Josh Allen to put on the Superman cape. That's why he's got the turnovers. The offense is very sloppy, but he still has them at 7-6. and six. This would be a massive win for not only him but, of course, the team. So now we'll um, – Move into the NBA here, and we're going to talk about the Draymond Green suspension. It just was announced last night that he will be suspended indefinitely. And I've been watching basketball since the 2016-17 season. I've never seen a player suspended indefinitely. So I don't know. This just kind of comes down to um, what the league wants to do. Um, You know, obviously he got ejected for punching Yusuf Nurkic in the face um, and earlier this year, he kind of put Rudy Gobert in a full-on chokehold, sleeper hold. Like, I think he got five games suspension for the Gobert thing. Um, and then, yeah, the soon as I, the soon as I saw that he punched Nurkic in the face, I was like, he's getting suspended again. Now, I didn't know it was going to be indefinitely. I don't know what that means. Um, but it, 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 I think it's just kind of like a sign of frustration from Draymond because the Warriors, they're just not very good this year. I am a Warriors fan. I'll always be a Warriors fan. And even I will admit, the Warriors are really bad this year. Um, it's kind of time to move on from this this part of the dynasty. Um, 
You know, and I talked about this before when the Warriors were bad. I hate whenever they were trying to do like this two timeline thing, whenever they had a bunch of young guys playing with their older guys. I was like, no, just put all the young guys together and go out there and try to make a big splash trade to maximize Steph, you know, the last years of prime Steph. And I feel like they're falling into that same rut. You know, they kind of caught lightning in a bottle in the 2022 playoffs, just went hot and played their best ball at the perfect time, won the championship. That's kind of an outlier in the later Warrior years because they've been trying to do this two-timeline thing with younger guys. I just don't think the team's very good. And I think the Draymond Green suspension is just kind of like, it symbolizes just the frustration of the Warriors. Um, I don't think he... He's not really that much of an impactful player at this point in his career. We know he brings IQ and defense, but in terms of him missing games, I don't think it's going to impact the Warriors' wins and losses all that much. Uh, so what are your thoughts on the Draymond Green suspension? Um, I think this is one of the – it's hard to say because he's had so many of uh, these dirty plays in his career, but this is one of the most egregious ones because some of them you can argue, okay, it was an accident. Um like, the one in the playoffs last year against Sabonis, I thought you could maybe argue, like, he was just trying to, like, uh, step over and accidentally stepped on Sabonis. But just given his past, they they suspended him a game in the playoffs. Um, but this one, there's no argument. He full-on just punched him in the face. Uh, so I get the suspension. I'm interested to see how long it actually, how many games it turns out to be. Uh, and that brings us to our final segment for today's show, and that is the Chicago Bears outlook. Um, I've been seeing a big debate online, particularly this past week, of, you know, it, it's kind of seemed like the, the whole season that the, the plan was to just move off of Justin Fields, and um, you're going to have the first pick because Carolina, you have their pick, and they're one of the worst teams in the N NFL. Um and there's Caleb. Obviously, Caleb, um, going into this college football year, Caleb Williams was looked at as a generational-level talent. And then he kind of had some issues this year. USC was not very good. Um, they lost some really bad games. Caleb kind of looked bad in a couple of them, uh, especially the Notre Dame game. He was terrible in that one. Um, so his stock has definitely slid. So now that has people questioning, is it even worth the Bears to just restart with a new quarterback? Um, you know, I saw some people, some Bears fans talking about maybe they should draft Marvin Harrison Jr. <clears throat> with the first pick. Uh, and then with that fifth pick that they currently have, which is their pick, they could go get one of the great offensive linemen. You have <clears throat> the uh, Notre, Dame, Notre Dame offensive lineman, Joe Alt. You could go grab him. There's the Penn State offensive lineman. I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name, but he's, he's there as well. Um, so... If you do go down that route of, of sticking with Justin Fields, that is just about as good as a draft as you can have. Getting him the best receiver prospect we've had in probably the past decade and a generational level offensive lineman, that would be incredible. I would say if that is the route you're going to go, I, I really don't have many issues with that um, as long as you're bringing in a new off <clears throat> offensive coach because Matt Eberflus, I think, is just out of touch Um the Bears hiring Matt Eberflus, I think, was a just it shows you how out of touch the organization is. You know, anytime you bring in a young quarterback that needs his untapped potential really developed, you need to bring in an offensive mind so he can bounce stuff off of. And what do the, the Bears do? They just do what the Bears do. They hire a defensive mind to go with their young quarterback. I think it was a completely boneheaded decision. I hate when teams do that. Because um, it very rarely works. You know, I think Houston this year is kind of the outlier. They had a rookie with CJ. They bring in a defensive mind in D'Amico, but it actually worked. It's it's the outlier. So that is a route you can definitely go. However, I would argue not to do that. I would reset. I would draft Caleb Williams with the first overall pick. And then with the fifth pick, you can either trade that or you can package that with fields and try to get something nice or... Um, maybe draft one of the O-linemen we just talked about with that fifth overall pick. But I think it's the better thing because Justin Fields, I have seen flashes where he looks like a good player, but it's just not very consistent. Like Justin Fields has played a lot of NFL games, um, and you just compare him to other high-round, you know, high-end first-round picks. We usually see at this point in their career if they're going to be a franchise guy. Now I get it. He's, he's been with the Bears. They've had a lot of, you know, dreadful teams around him. Their offensive line, 
especially his first couple years, terrible. Um, his receiver core outside of DJ Moore this year has been very lackluster. Um, but I just haven't really seen the big wow throws from Justin Fields. He hasn't, for me personally, he hasn't shown me enough for me to say, yeah, they should put their arms around him and build around him. Especially whenever you have the chance to draft Caleb, who I still think very highly of. Like I said, I know he struggled this year with USC, but I still, you know, look at his stats. They're still monstrous. Um, he's still, for me, the same prospect. I get it. He had a couple bad games, but a lot of quarterbacks have bad games. And yeah, so if this was just in a vacuum and the Bears had like the 12th overall pick and not one in five right now, I would say, yeah, that's fine. Uh, keep fields and try to build around him, just bring in a new coach. But that's not the scenario the Bears are in. They have the first overall pick. So I think both scenarios I could actually get behind. I personally would prefer drafting Caleb just because I I think it's time to reset with the Bears, just clean house, start over. Um, but if they go down the route of drafting you know, Marvin Harrison and um, or maybe trading that fifth pick or getting an O-lineman, I could like to see that as well. Uh, I'm just really interested. I think that this draft is one of the best draft classes uh, of the past decade, really. I mean, there's so many great quarterback talents. There's a lot of great receiver talents, O-lineman talents. I can't wait for this draft. But that's been it for today. Uh, if you made it this far, I really appreciate you listening to me uh, ramble. Um, if you're interested in some of my other videos, um, I'd love to see your opinions on my top 10 Super Bowl teams ranked or, you know, the past 10 Super Bowl teams. I did that video. Go check that out. I ranked the past 10 NBA champions. Go check that video out. Uh, so that is it. Uh, appreciate it. Please like and subscribe.